Good evening, good evening. From John 19, John 19. For the sake of time, I want to anchor on seven words. Seven words. Woman, behold your son. Behold your mother. On the surface, this would appear to be that Jesus is being insensitive or just plain old rude. To refer to his mother as woman. Doesn't de seem to fit, but um, in their culture, it was a compliment. It was endearing. And um, in fact, you would recall that in, in Jesus' first miracle, um, they ran out of wine. And Mary went to Jesus and said, they have no wine. To which he said, woman, what is your concern to me? My hour has not yet come. But, but so the, this, this word woman and, and our ears just sound strange. But it's actually an idiom. I-D-I-O-M. It's an idiom. It's where the translators had a difficult time translating a word over to our culture from the Greek to the English, and so they use idioms. We, we, we have that. When I went to India a few years ago, um, I used the idiom. For those who may know, when you go to a foreign country, you got to connect with the translator. And that's not easy. And we had just started, and um, I did my best with trying to do my English, and he tried to translate it. And after which, I said to the crowd, you did a good job. Give yourselves a hand. And they looked at their hands. Because why would they need a hand when they already had two? It was an idiom that's good for us, but they didn't get it. So finally, I did like this. And they still didn't get it. But afterwards, they came up to me and they gave me their hand. No, we didn't get you with saying, look, why don't you just have a hand so that we can appreciate? No, no, no. It's obvious that the speaker wants us to give us his hand. So they gave me their hand and, and we had high five. And, but, but in our culture, it's, it's not a whole lot different. We have an idiom that everybody knows. Heads up! Heads up means watch your head. But it sounds like something different. Heads up. But it's really an idiom that's saying, watch your head. Idioms. So, 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 G, so the, the translators use an idiom. And in our culture, we would say, lady. Miss. But he's also establishing something else here. That Mary, the relationship has changed. I, I, I'm going away. I'm, I'm dying on this cross, but I'm mindful to think of you. But I'm not saying mom. I'm saying, as the NIV would put it, dear woman. It's tender. But he also realizes that because all, in all likelihood, Joseph has died now. And he wants his mother to be cared for. And, and, but he, he also realizes that because of John 7, verse 5, it says, even his brothers did not believe in him. I stopped by to let you know, sometime on, your own kinfolk won't look out for you. I, I, I realize that if you haven't heard about the 2 a.m. friend, the 2 a.m. friend is the person that you can call at 2 a.m. in the morning. That when you say you're going through some hard times, that you say, I need you here right now. Meet me here. I'm about to go out my mind. You got a 2 a.m. friend. I sure hope you got a 2 a.m. friend. And can I get a little closer to home? I hope you are a 2 a.m. friend. Everybody needs a 2 a.m. friend. And, and Jesus had in John a 2 a.m. friend. You see, John was the only man at the cross. All the others had scattered and were scared, but John was right there. This is the same John that says in the passage, the one whom Jesus loved. 
Jesus had the 12, and one of them was a traitor. And then he had the 11, but he had an inner circle, Peter, James, and John. But within that inner circle, there was John. John would be with him through the thick and thin. In fact, history tells us he was the only one that was not martyred. John was that kind of friend. And he's mindful, and he turns to Mary, and he says, Woman, behold your son. John's going to be there the same as I would be. I trust John with you, and I know he's tight. I know he's a 2 a.m. friend because he's right here at the cross. I know him deep. He was the same one that leaned on Jesus' breast. <laughs> Peter, Jesus said, one of you going to betray me. And Peter said, John, ask him. He was right near. He was right in his ear. He knew him tight. Oh, and he says, you know what? I'm going to entrust you to my mom because I know you're going to care for her. But it didn't stop there. He says, John, when times get tough, you're going to have to have a mother in your life. So he was entrusting both of them into each other's care. And you know what, saints, they got it. You know how I know they got it? Look at what the passage says at the end. John chapter um, 19, verse 27. At the end it says, And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own house. <laughs> he knew what he would do, and he knew he couldn't trust. The first word we heard, the first sentence, had to deal with, as we looked at it, we talked about forgiveness forgiveness extended the second word that we heard it talked about salvation granted but here when we talk about this word here it's affection embraced he looked out for his mother and he looked out for his best friend and he brought them together and they got it woman behold your son son Behold your mother. Amen.